What's going on guys? This is one of my more highly requested videos out there for some reason, and it's just how to use Iris Trader on FP Markets. On the FP Markets website, click on Iris Login, go to Iris Trader, put in your details, and hit Login. Now keep in mind, this is a Java-based platform, so you need to install Java manually for Firefox, for Chrome, for Internet Explorer, whatever it is that you use. You'll also be provided your Iris details once you fund your Iris account with FP Markets, not beforehand. So it must be funded first. Keep that in mind. So guys, if you plan on launching or rather working with Iris Trader on FP Markets, I do have a referral link and I'll put that in the com in the description below. You get a bonus $100. I get a bonus $100. We're both winners. Now, you'll be met with this screen here. It'll look a little bit different, but I'll show you how I configure it. So I set my display, configure display, font chooser. I set my font to 12, it's default 14. And then I select the display. I scroll down to six frames, horizontal split. What that means is we have three tabs up the top, three tabs down the bottom. And then up this top left, we click on this box here. And what we have, what we're looking for is portfolio, but it's not there, unfortunately. So whatever's not listed here is listed up in the top here in one of these tabs. So we go to analytics, portfolio, and for me, I set it to the top left frame. And this is what it'll look like. Click on CFD, click on this end button, hit search, click on your account and click OK. Now it's a little bit fiddly, but you'll only have to really do this once. You'll be met with your account details, your gross liquidation value, your start of day balance your realized and unrealized profit, as well as profit loss for the day, and the amount of margin you're currently using. Then down the bottom here, we have the securities that you've either traded for today or attempted to trade but have not executed anything. So you can see total profit here, we've got a loss of 435 on Afterpay on this demo account, and we have zero volume for everything, meaning we don't have any exposure to anything at the moment. Net exposure here is at zero as well, just to confirm. Now in the top middle, I prefer to have depth up here, each to their own, but you can click here and click on depth. Unfortunately, depth is not here as well. I believe that is under pricing, depth, and top middle frame. So we type in, let's say, Afterpay. We can see the bid and the ask in the depth here, or the order book. Unfortunately, because this isn't a demo account, we can only see one bid and one ask. Otherwise, it'll be normally fully populated. We also have the course of sales, the last 20 trades here. And if you scroll to the right-hand side, you'll, be, you'll see VWAP, which is somewhere around here. I prefer to drag it as close to the front as I can because I love VWAP. It is one of my most important tools that I use for trading for support and resistance levels and just key trading in general. And next, I set on the bottom left, I set to quote, which again is not listed here. So we go to pricing, quote, and bottom left. And this is basically a watch list for the day. Let's say zip pay, bit of roo, bit of SPT. And from here, it's really easy to just right click and sell or right click and buy. And these will be your order, basically your tickets to buy and sell. Your ticket will look like this when you first start using Irish Trader. What I do is I go to this settings here and I get rid of if done. That's basically a stop loss and take profit trigger. But we'll go through how to do stop losses and take profits manually a little bit later. If you know, you're trading, you're day trading in the middle of the day, or rather at the start of the day, and you don't have time to fill these out, so I just click on if done and get rid of it and have my order tickets to look pretty simple. So let's walk through it. We've got Afterpay here. We've got a delay of 20 minutes only because this is a demo account, otherwise it's live. We have an initial margin of 10%. What that means is we're trading at 10x leverage. So what you do is 100 divided by 10 and we've got 10x leverage. Some stocks will be 15% margin. So what you have is 100 divided by 15 and you'll have 6.6x leverage. Next, we can see if we can short the stock, yes or no. So in this case, yes, you can short Afterpay. 
let's say we got a thousand in volume we want to sell at 90 sorry this is the buy ticket let's go to the sell ticket we got a thousand at 91 dollars keep in mind guys this is in cents not dollars so this is 91 dollars this is 90 we get rid of the decimal place that's 91 dollars so this represents cents so some spec stocks can go into cents like 5.2 cents and yes yeah, so that's not 5.2 dollars that's 5.2 cents in this case back to afterpay if we want to short at 91 dollars we have a thousand shares we'll be selling ninety one thousand dollars on the market right so irish trader with fp markets is a direct market access provider meaning fp markets will sell these shares on your behalf so you'll be selling ninety one thousand dollars into the actual market you'll see your order flow through the order book this isn't like other cfd providers that you see like ig and pretty much any other non-dma provider so this is real volumes flowing through the market now you'll need a margin of nine thousand dollars so we have a available balance of 52 or rather free equity of 52,000. So we meet this requirement quite easily. Even though we're trading $91,000 worth, which is almost twice as much as our free equity, we only need $9,000 worth to trade. Now you can set a limit order or a market to limit. I just prefer limit. And uh, I accidentally closed that ticket. So I just cr create a sell order. A thousand at $91 and let's say one cent and we sell and click OK. And this is where I have the order pad down here. So again, it's not in this list down here. We go to orders, order pad, bottom middle frame. And this is what it'll look like. This is the default. This is all the orders we've tried to put in. We can see we've created and canceled some orders. So you can see everything from the last three days or today, whatever you like. But I prefer setting it to today and pending and open so i can see what's actually gone through and what's failed in this case after paid a thousand shares it's authorizing because we're trading in aftermarket at the moment it's 5 30 pm so we can't actually put through a trade hence why we're stuck in authorizing now if you ever have a failed trade it'll say failed here scroll to the right hand side and in the act stat description, it'll tell you exactly why it failed. In this case, a trading time ban is in place because the trade session's closed. Pretty straightforward stuff. Otherwise, if this gets executed, it'll show up here in actual volume in Afterpay as negative 1,000. That means we're short 1,000 shares. So I'll just delete this. We don't need it, we can amend it, but I'll just delete it. And in the bottom right corner, I set, uh, I set trades to the bottom right corner. Let me just find out where that actually is. Unfortunately, I've lost track of where to find trades. I believe that's under, there we go, orders, trades, and bottom right frame. And this is what it'll look like. You can set a range to see what you've traded since, let's say, March of 2020. So the last six months or so, five months, and you can see exactly what you've traded. I prefer having it set to today and then I can see exactly what I've traded and you can group it by the order number so that way usually when you set an order uh, let's say 500 shares what you'll get is you'll get 100 shares 130 and 50 shares 20 shares pretty much all the way until this gets filled so in order to minimize that in order to seeing absolutely every order that went through I just highlight order number and group by order number it makes things really easy Alternatively, one thing worth noting is I set just to account, and this makes it really easy for me to calculate my margin for the day. So you can see I've got $183,000 traded. So I do $183 plus and another $183,000 there, so plus another $183. And if you're trading at 0.1% commissions, there you go, 366 is going to be your commissions. Otherwise, I'm trading at six basis points, so times that by 0.6. And I'll be trading, I'll have commissions of $219 for these trades that went through on a real account. So your commissions will be deducted from your account, I believe it's at the end of the day. And then at the end of the trading day, the next trading day, you'll get a report in your email. 
It'll tell you exactly how much commissions you paid for the previous day and it shows you your entire order list basically, basically everything you've traded for that day. So if you've got, let's say a referral link, let's say you signed up with a referral, your ledger will also show plus $100 in your account in your email. So that's how you find out whether you've been funded that referral link for anyone that's interested. Now let's go into charting. So we go analytics, chart, and let's say a new window. Now I wanna move this to my other screen. So I've got a, a screen here on the right hand side and I've got a screen here on the left hand side as well, as well as one above. But I can't show you guys this because I can only show one monitor at a time. So let's just pretend we have a second monitor right here. Now bring up my chart. Let's say after pay, I wanna have a look at the daily and after pay on the one minute chart over the last two days. I can just click and drag and I can zoom in on any part of that chart and then I can hit this magnifying glass and, and just zoom out. From here I can do, let's say intraday in the last five days, pretty straightforward stuff. I can set my candles or I can do a line chart. I can do quite a lot of customization. If you don't like how this looks, you can just right click edit chart and set color. And really the, the default is absolutely horrific. It's, it's so ugly. So really I just set the background. I like a nice dark background, something more towards black. And then I like the grid lines to be more gray, like a light gray. I don't like my grid lines to be super obvious. And then the axis, maybe I can have the axis and it shows you, it updates here in the preview. And maybe I can do my foreground, which is the, the actual lines. The candles, a bit yellow, and there we go. And if you don't like grid lines, you can just right click, edit the chart, get rid of the grid lines. It's all pretty straightforward. And I don't know why, but on the left hand side is the, um, the digits. So you can just hit right axis, make it a little easier. And here you can just right click and save your charts. The save chart, we can call it FP demo. So that way, if I close my charts, uh, chart, new window, right click, I can go to FP demo. And I've got my chart that I just saved. Everything's exactly the same. If I have multiple windows, multiple charts, let's say I have six charts on one screen. Let's say my second monitor here on the left hand side, I want to set up six charts. And I want that there every morning, every time I sign in. So what I do is I set it up exactly how I want it. I hit window and save layout and click yes. So you wanna save your layout every time you log in, however you left your layout, however you saved it is exactly how it'll load in the morning when you reopen Iris Trader. That's all pretty well and good, all, all rather straightforward stuff. It's a decently powerful charting software. We can, let me just change this a little bit something to a little bit less ugly. Now we have here the drawing tool and we can just draw trend lines. Again, you can change the color of your trend lines if you like. We've got horizontals and Fibonacci are the main sort of tools that I use. If you wanna delete or edit these chart tools, you have to close the toolbar and then you can play around with it. Otherwise you just keep creating multiple instances. So just right click and delete or you can resize and edit the, uh, the tool as you like. From here, we can add indicators, we can add volume, we can add the MACD, we can do whatever you want, Bollinger Bands, we can edit the Bollinger Bands however you like. Sorry. It's a bit fiddly, you have to click in the right spot to edit the indicator. So right click, edit indicator, and you can choose the period for your Bollinger Bands or whatever indicator that you have. And that's pretty much it when it comes to charting. It's all quite straightforward. It takes a little bit to get used to, but when you do, it's actually pretty powerful stuff. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the VWAP, so I keep the VWAP here in my depth and I keep an eye on it there. Uh, next is contingent order. Let's have a look at how to execute a contingent order, which is basically a stop loss or a take profit target or both. So let's say we have a thousand shares short on Afterpay. It'll say a negative thousand here. So we create contingent order. 
Now we can set only a stop loss, only a take profit, or we can set both so that if one of them gets triggered, then the other order gets removed. What happens is you can do two of these, two fixed COs, so you can do a take profit and a stop loss. But what happens is when one gets triggered, the other one is still active. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an OCO, which is one cancels other. Here, we'll have the exact same screen as a fixed CO. I believe that stands for fixed conditional order. I'm not too sure on that definition, but it doesn't really matter. So let's set our stop loss first. Let's say we have $91 is our short. So we want the last traded price to be greater or equal to, let's say, $95. So when it hits $95, we want to sell, or rather, we want to buy back, because we're currently shorting, we want to buy back 1,000 shares at, let's say, $95.10. Or we can set a market order. I personally prefer market, but you can do a limit order or a market to limit. It's entirely up to you. Personal preference for me is a market because that way it guarantees my exit regardless of price. Then we click on the next one, the next conditional order, and we hit a APT, so after pay again. We want the last traded price to be less than or equal to, let's say $88 is our take, $88.50. $88.50 is our take profit target. So when it hits $88.50, we wanna close, we wanna buy back a thousand shares at $88.60. And we'll leave this one as a limit order. So the moment $88.50 gets hit in the order book that that trade gets executed, this will be triggered on the right hand side, meaning we'll buy back a thousand shares at 88.60. We'll click OK and we can read through this contingency order. After pay the last traded greater than or equal to $95 means we'll buy back a thousand shares on the market. Or with after pay, the last traded price is less than or equal $88.50. We buy back a thousand shares at $88.60 as our limit price. So yes, that is our take, our stop loss and our take profit. You'll see here the OCO, one cancels other. If this gets triggered here, if this order here gets triggered, then the other one gets removed. So that's super helpful. I think you guys will find it super useful if you're trading for longer term positions. And do keep in mind with longer term positions, if you're holding overnight, there is a funding fee. I forget what the rate is because my rate is a little bit different than the default rate. So if you want to know the rate on what it costs you to hold a position overnight, I personally don't find it expensive at all. If you're not using heavy leverage of any sort, I it usually costs me anywhere from one cent to, I don't know, maybe a dollar or two, depending on how many tens of thousands of dollars I'm holding overnight. So do ask and do email support at fpmarkets.com to find out what your funding rate is to know exactly how much you're getting charged every day for holding a position. Because these are CFD guys. This is contract for difference. You do not own these shares. Now, one last thing is we wanna to go to order and quick trade. It doesn't matter what we click on here. And let me just close these out. And we have the quick trade panel. This is to sell things and buy things really quickly. So you can see the spread here. Now we are in aftermarket. So these are the auction bids and asks. So obviously there's a huge spread here, but normally they're a lot closer. And what you can do is you can set, let's say 500 shares and you can just hit bang, buy. And you can see straight away, it creates a, uh, a limit, a market then limit order, I believe, or market to limit order. So you can hit advanced here or detail and you can see exactly how much you're spending on this order. But uh, you should really be aware of how much volume and what size that looks like and how much of your margin that takes up. And because trading the quick trade panel in the morning can be quite dangerous because there's a lot of spread. So in the first two minutes of Afterpay specifically, there can be like a spread of 40 cents so if you hit buy and then you hit sell, you're going to get wrecked immediately. You'll instantly lose uh, 40 pips, which at $5 a pip, 
you know, that's <laughs> uh, that's what 40 pips times five, that's $200, right? You're instantly losing $200 in the morning if you do this. Uh, however, I personally do like using the quick trade panel uh, after the first couple of minutes of trade when the spread has lowered a lot more. That's just a personal preference of mine. And that's pretty much it, guys. That covers everything, I think. So I hope this has helped. If you found this tutorial, this guide, this insight into FP markets and Irish Trader, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. And uh, guys, have a good one.